Welcome to the second part of this uh, Unix series. We'll be looking at um, another game between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomeneshi. Their first non-youth classical game. Uh, in the first episode we saw World Under 12 when they made for the first time. We saw that game and this time we'll be seeing a game from White and Z 2011. Magnus is white and Jan is black. Let's jump into the game. So we got a NAD off, a pretty predictable system from Ian. He has been playing NAD off for, for ages. Magnus chooses uh, the classical system, uh, the so-called positional line, uh, the, the bishop e2 variation. And he goes for a very off-pit system. The move king h1 was popular at, uh, at one point, but recently it does not have uh, a strong theoretical reputation but then uh, when that ever stopped Magnus you know from playing a line which does not have very high theoretical reputation he plays and then the line kind of gets trendy in this case however uh, from the opening uh, it was clear that uh, Jan was uh, well prepared the line knight c6 and b5 is also traditionally known as uh, one of the refutation for this king h1 f4 line we got to a position uh, Bishop e3, Bishop b7, and this slightly unusual move a4. Just like we saw in the first game, Alekhine defense, here also we see Magnus choosing lines that are really rare, and he has already played this. Magnus played this against Dominguez uh, back in uh, 2010, so just one year before he played this, and that game continued with knight b4. Here, uh, Jan played e into f4, and after rook f4, knight e5. A typical way of uh, blocking the pawn on e5 and at the same time giving some kind of a threat to play b4 and targeting the pawn on e4. Now the thing is uh, in return we are giving one pawn but uh, we'll see that soon what happens if uh, white actually goes for the b5 pawn. In the game Magnus played uh, queen d4. Now this is a very interesting move. It stops b4. It still attacks uh, the pawn on b5 and white is saying you know if you want to take go ahead and take it I might take with the rook and I'm supporting the e4 pawn in maximum force and you still have a weakness to take care of. Jan plays a move uh, which is uh, directly uh, aimed against the move queen d4. He says okay I play knight c6 attacking the queen Magnus plays queen d2 and knight e5 back. Now if we compare this position with the position that we had here, we can say white got a free queen d2 move instead of the queen on d1. But black is saying, you know what, it doesn't make any difference because I want to play b4 in any case. How do you take advantage of your extra move queen d2? Magnus repeated one more time and we got to this position. Magnus already used a lot of time in this game uh, reaching this point and here he gave a long thought too. He tried to not repeat here, not to settle for draw and tried to win. Objectively, at this point, black has zero issues in the position. White should have repeated. White should have, you know, simply repeated and just made a draw. But Magnus trying to win, he goes for the b5 pawn. Now, takes, takes happens. How to take this pawn? We don't want to get our knight on a1. So one obvious suggestion could be why not to take on a8. But then black takes on a8 and attacks on e4. This Magnus did not want. So which means to move the rook. But the question is where to move the rook. One obvious move could be rook to d1. Makes a lot of sense, right? I'm, I'm putting it in an open file and black has a weakness on d6. This would have been the ideal move. Most likely Magnus did not like the following uh, idea. Before we get there, just wanted to add that if white would not take a b5, apart from b4, there is also another threat knight g6. In fact, this is the very reason why it is unable to consolidate his position because the pawn on e4 is kind of weak. Back to this position where uh, Magnus in the game played rook e1, but let's take a look at the normal move rook d1. Black would play knight g6 attacking the pawn on e4. So rook f1 takes, takes and takes. And now we see the difference. Now, if bishop into b5, white is likely to get under attack on g2. This is the reason most likely Magnus kept his rook on e1 so that he could play rook e2. However, at this point, 
white need not to take on b5 white white had a very strong move knight d4 which would give him compensation he's still not better but the position is uh, dynamically balanced however instead of all this magnus played the move uh, rook e1 what is the point that we already saw that after knight g6 rook f1 if black would take on e4 then after takes takes bishop b5 this time we are ready to meet knight h4 with rook e2 however keeping the rook on e1 instead of d1 has another disadvantage that is black is able to play b4 and after knight d4 black can take on e4 and this time the rook is not on d1 which means there is no protection on d5 and we are unable to take on uh, b4 because of uh, bishop into d5 so after knight into e4 magnus took on e7 took on e7 and queen takes b4 now it is very hard to speculate until what point magnus saw when he played uh, rook a e1 did he see knight h4 at this point i assume yes was he aiming for the following position like he saw knight h4 and he thought knight h4 is not a great move although it attacks here but uh, white has a very interesting option to play knight f3 it is possible again i cannot be 100% sure but it is possible that magnus saw all the way until here a position that looks clearly better for white suddenly the knight has no place to move if it goes to f6 we just go bishop g5 and the queen on uh, e7 uh, is kind of overloaded to protect uh, both uh, b7 and f6 which means when we take on f6 black structure will be completely shattered what is black supposed to do there is a there is a pin here the knight is under attack the bishop is under attack it is possible when magnus played rook e on he saw all the way until here but miss the following brilliant move played by nepo who is uh, once again we will see number of times exceptionally strong when it comes to such uh, tricky positions a fascinating move queen to d7 now what is this queen doing on d7 first of all there is no more pin secondly most importantly if we take here out of nowhere the rook comes to a4 attacking the queen now bishop into e4 is happening the king is oddly placed on h1 and after king g1 queen g4 and all sorts of things are happening on the king side white is likely to get mated after king f2 queen g2 suddenly white is unable to take on e4 and the threat of rook a4 is kind of devastating for example if white would play king g1 still rook a4 and after a move like queen b6 there are many ways for example we could also play a move like bishop a6 attacking on f1 and after takes check here either take on f1 or even to play f5 and the rook also joins the attack so queen d7 uh, gives a tremendous advantage to black and uh, here uh, magnus played the move bishop f4 anyway rook to f4 attacking the queen everything is protected we can see and queen has absolutely no square other than uh, going to b6 which is what happened in the game couple of options actually uh, g5 was uh, interesting what was another interesting move was to play knight f2 and after queen takes f2 rook f4 knight d4 yan apparently considered this position as more or less equal which is um, slightly surprising because it feels like black is just uh, clearly better and i think it's matter of taste for example maybe magnus with uh, black here would uh, totally enjoy black position here and he would probably opt for this one so it's interesting to observe certain detail that uh, uh, for nepo this position was not attractive because uh, he he kind of felt this is uh, in his annotations he he writes that this leads to equality let's say i play a move some, something like h5 and after c3 just rook c8 just by looking at the position it it feels obvious that black is just clearly better here and white has to suffer for a long time i mean there is no immediate attack happening but there is a long term strategic advantage but nepo wanted the position to be more dynamic so he keeps more pieces so these are the important also detail uh, which i wanted to point out uh, during the course of the video that the style i am almost certain that you know if magnus was black he would have probably get attracted to the the position that we saw so knight f6 is also an interesting move uh, keeping more pieces keeping more dynamism in the position and after queen d6 uh, nepo goes uh, queen g4 computer already thinks that uh, black has spoiled the advantage and it was wiser to have played knight f2 that we saw uh, in the previous move and now we get to a position uh, where the f3 pawn is under attack and the 
f4 bishop is under attack so white goes knight d4 and uh, black takes on d4 and now bishop into f3 so we get to this position by force and this is a moment to uh, to kind of pause here uh, Jan played a very interesting move uh, once again uh, psychologically i would say it's a it's a very difficult move to uh, spot and to play they say backward queen moves are one of the easiest move to miss although computer does not say this is the strongest move in the position but uh, i feel practically this is uh, the strongest actually he goes queen c8 i'm not sure how many players would actually spot this move i can say it other way around maybe some players uh, with the queen on c8 would like to get to h3 or g4 but with the queen on g4 nepo pulls it back the basic idea is he wants to activate the rook and also the pawn on c2 is under attack so he is consolidating and he's kind of saying i have queen and knight which will create more attack on white's king so the game continues with queen f2 queen b7 uh, slightly weird here is uh, instead of queen f2 white could play the move c4 and after uh, rook d8 queen b6 there is a very strong move knight e4 with with some uh, huge huge attack uh, coming towards uh, white's king however the move that was never mentioned anywhere was after queen c8 let's take a break here and try to understand why is our king weak mainly because okay first of all we don't have a pawn and secondly we know that queen and knight creates a lot of uh, attacking ideas so wouldn't it be natural to uh, exchange the knight so a move like bishop g5 would be exceptionally strong a move that was never mentioned by anyone i am attacking the knight here and i'm saying if you play a move like rook d8 i can play something like let's say queen to f4 and now knight d5 uh, does not work because i just take on d8 and after knight f4 uh, rook e8 is kind of mate and uh, if you do not move then anyway i'm going to take the knight so computer says at this point probably queen x c2 is the best way uh, but then takes queen c6 check and we we get to some sort of an uh, uh, major piece end game which according to machine it's uh, be better for black obviously but uh, essentially this is a draw i mean uh, white is going to hold this position without much difficulty so the other option could be uh, after bishop g5 uh, to move the knight maybe to d7 but this we don't really want to do because once you move the knight then then the king doesn't look uh, unsafe at all so really the best option would have been to get into this position when i believe uh, white will just hold this position comfortably magnus played queen f2 queen b7 check king g1 it was possible to play queen g2 instead of king g1 but after queen takes b2 bishop e5 queen b6 keeping protection on f6 it's not clear where is the compensation and still the king is kind of uh, weak so king g1 happened in the game and now knight e4 if black takes here this time there is a uh, bishop e5 and if rook d8 here then there is bishop g5 black really does not want to give the knight on f6 so he plays knight e4 a uh, note that uh, a move like uh, let's say queen f3 would uh, run into queen b6 check and after bishop e3 there is again uh, something like queen f3 check so king g1 knight e4 happened queen d4 rook e8 this was the time for magnus to create some sort of counter now i think it's always easier to play from uh, black side in such scenario because uh, if white makes one mistake he could just get mated while uh, black make some mistake it only worsen his position slightly i mean okay we are not counting that if uh, black moves the knight and some back rank happens so rook e2 h6 so no more uh, back rank any uh, any further and also preparing for rook g2 g5 h3 happened in the game rook e6 king h2 we are approaching 48th move so here also one can see magnus skill on uh, making small improvement in his position just playing h3 king h2 safeguarding the king f5 happened and this was the 40th move at this point there was a very good chance that uh, magnus missed uh, he could play queen c4 pinning most likely black would play queen f7 trying to unpin the rook and at this point centralization of queen queen to d5 the only way to attack could be to uh, push the pawns so g5 and probably probably it's possible that uh, magnus uh, 
kind of either underestimated this move or simply didn't see it. That is uh, bishop b8, keeping the bishop in this diagonal. And um, it's still not clear. I mean, I understand that uh, it's not very easy to play from the white side, but uh, objectively white is still doing fine. Instead of this, uh, white played b4. And after king h7, rook e3, g5 was possible, but uh, rook g6 is also strong. We see some sort of attacks that are happening on the uh, g2, some kind of x-ray. So rook e2, queen b5, attacking the rook on e2. And after rook e1, it was possible to play a, make a move like queen a6 when uh, everything is tied down. The bishop doesn't move uh, because uh, it does not have a good square. The rook doesn't move. Uh, the queen is also kind of ideally placed, so it, that does not move either. White is unable to play c4 because of queen a2. So white would lack serious uh, alternative at this point. So rook c6 happened in the game, which is also pretty straightforward attacking on the c2 pawn. And at this point, Magnus decided to part uh, with his rook. It's also very hard to suggest any alternative. If queen, takes d, uh, queen d3, then queen takes b4 is happening. And we got to a position like this, which is uh, pretty much over. It's not just the material, but it's also about the king, right? The king is kind of uh, completely weak. All black needs is to unpin his rook and then slowly activate his position. h4, of course, h5. Black is not going to allow white to play h5. And after c4, queen d2. If not c4, let's say if white would play a move like queen e2 to stop queen d2. But then the queen comes to f5. And eventually, all this will become a weakness and an obligation. If there was a pawn on f2, imagine if you know any pawn was on f2, then white could uh, try to create some sort of a fortress. But here, that's not happening. So c4 happened in the game, and one pawn gone. She could also take here, but uh, queen c3 is nice because it uh, forces white to move his queen from e4. And now finally, Nepo takes on b4. Queen f5 takes, takes. Rest of the game's game is actually uh, pretty, pretty direct. Rook h6 happened. Uh, now all black has to do is just exchange queens. Once the queens are off, the h4 pawn will eventually fall and black will win the game. That is what uh, pretty much happened uh, in the game and uh, it does not require any, any special commentary at this point. Uh, you know, black is kind of improving his position. He unpinned himself, now he comes for the mate and uh, essentially forcing white uh, to exchange the queens and uh, there is no way, uh, there is no way to eliminate the g7 pawn which means uh, white will lose this pawn and with another extra pawn the position is dead lost. Magnus resigned here. Our conclusion, I would say if we go back to the position where it was repeating, we see the nature of uh, a bit similar to what we saw in the first game also that uh, Magnus is not uh, easily satisfied with a draw and he is ready to take risk. He is ready to overstretch his position at times. Especially we'll see this with Nepo in a number of games. And uh, when uh, when Jan is getting chance, he is very good at striking. Uh, like we saw in this game, once he got the chance, you, you know, the star move here was clearly the move... Uh, Queen to d7 and um, this this changed the game completely so and without this move white would have been uh, winning almost but it is this move that changed the course of the game drastically uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the second episode and i'll look forward to seeing you in the third one bye bye